you can't outright assume that an expense because of its size is good or bad. What you have to understand is when I incur that expense, what are the outcomes that will be derived from that expense? Albeit whether that the incurrence of that expense might set a precedent that could cause a problem somewhere else. Is that expense going to generate revenue in a day, in a month, in a week? Is a dollar spent going to generate $10 of revenue? Is $10 spent going to generate $100 in revenue? Or is $10 spent going to generate $8 in revenue? The disconnect that sometimes happens that finance is meant to bring to the table is because they're supposed to understand the knock-on effect of all expenditure decisions to actually give an accurate representation or at least a forecast of what that truly should translate into based on all the inputs from sales, from marketing, from creative, from technical, and from the banking or sort of the source of funding, they're supposed to be able to say, if I spend that dollar, yes, I can translate that back into $3 within X amount of time. And therefore that's either acceptable or not. I think it's really important that the finance person resists offering their subjective opinion on these things. They should first present the objective, get the objective understood, have the conversation objectively, and then they're welcome to weigh in their subjective opinions. And one of the best things that we do for clients is we project. So we take those metrics, we look at the historical results of those metrics combined, and then we take those in the exact same metrics and project what would happen if different components of those metrics were to change. And show the entrepreneur, if you got more sales leads and this is your conversion rate, this is what your revenue would be. One of the tests I do with a lot of entrepreneurs is I take those metrics and I say, tell me what you think the outcome would be. Change the metrics and what do you think the outcome would be? And many times they think they know the answer and instinctively they're typically in the right direction. That's what the advice allows you to do. It allows you to be a bit more precise in your predictions and a bit less invested in those predictions emotionally. When you are faced with a series of circumstances where a great many of them are outside of your control, step back, identify what's within your control, focus on that. Don't try to change what you can't change. So it takes a whole lot of control and discipline to recognize what you actually have the ability to change. So I say to entrepreneurs, when you're in survival mode, don't try to rewrite your business. Understand which parts of those things that are affecting you are outside of your control. Try your best to understand where that control lies, or whether that's protecting your existing cash reserves, fortifying your product or service to be the best that it can be, ring out efficiencies that you're able to ring out of your, your product, serve your clients better for those clients who still are doing business with you, but focus on the things that you have the ability to control. Changing your core is changing your business. And so you've got to understand, like, so the great example, I read the book about um, Netflix and the whole morph amorphous of Netflix from being a mail order video business that is completely unlikely that one would think that that could make money. But they recognize that a big part of the problem with people who were going to Blockbuster was returning the bloody videos. But they quickly realized that they could change the way that they do the exact same essence of their business. The mission is still the same. Convenience, view movie or content when you want to view it, where you want to view it, and when you're finished, it's not difficult to get rid of it. It's the same mission, they just translated how they do it. So what, what I say is they pivoted without changing their core. They didn't change the, the, their original reason for being, they didn't change their purpose as an organization, but they pivoted to take advantage of a new way to deliver the promise that they gave to their customers. So don't change your promise, you know what I mean? Pivot to deliver that promise in a way that's suitable for the current circumstances.